So it finally happened. Looks like Alex Mashinsky is uh, finally being arrested, and it just happened today. A lot of things to unpack, and uh, thankfully, I found someone who could help me unpack this the best, which would be Mr. Simon Dixon from Bank of the Future. Simon, is it not a great day today? Rob, it's a crazy day. Um, it's exactly one year since Celsius filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, and one month prior to that, uh, when they paused on June the 12th, June the 12th, 2022, my father passed away and they paused withdrawals at the same time. I then had to try and, because I was a shareholder in Celsius, yeah. um, I wanted to see if I could support with a restructuring. And then exactly about a month later, uh, when I told everyone this is going into bankruptcy and there's fraud, and Cell Token is in the middle of a criminal investigation. Right. Um, so I broke that on your channel almost ident about a year ago. Yeah. And today you invited me to speak on your channel, not knowing that today would be the day that the news would be broken and that Alex Mijinsky is arrested. I did warn everybody that it would happen this month, but I didn't know it was going to happen today. And that just happens that we were scheduling doing the talk. Right. It's crazy because we just did NFA Live with uh, Guy and Ben. We broke that. We, and I had you on as a special guest, unbeknownst to me about what was happening in the background. So let's go over this and break this down for everybody to understand this. So the first thing is this. Finally, Alex is arrested. We're going to take a look at the article about what the actual stipulations are and what the uh, things that are being said as far as legalities. Second one, the New York Attorney General is also suing them. And the question then is, what is the defense here for Alex Mashinsky? And lastly, is Celsius token an earned program of security? Who owns those tokens? So the first things first, this is from Bloomberg. And you can find this on multiple publications, but here is what we have. Today, the SEC, the CFTC, and the FTC filed lawsuits uh, against Mashinsky and the company. Prosecutors claim that from 2018 through June 2022, Mashinsky orchestrated a scheme to defraud customers of Celsius Network LLC and its related entities. Mashinsky's lawyers didn't comment. I can understand why. The SEC alleged that Mashinsky and his company made misleading statements to encourage investors to purchase its sell token and to put money in the firm's earn interest program that promised returns as high as 17% on users' crypto deposits. So break that down for us, Simon. I guess that would... Uh, go from there. And what do you think about all this? How does this all work out? Yeah, so um, the, the important thing to understand about Celsius is there was misrepresentation right from day dot. Um, so Mijinsky uh, funded Celsius through 50 million token sale, um, but 18 million of that was um, shortfall because he wanted to make it look like the token sale was more popular um, and he actually promised to make that investment because they didn't want to reveal to customers that the token sale didn't sell out. Um, and later they papered up agreements because he never actually paid. He still owes the estate 18 million and he took the tokens um, anyway. And then he figured out a way of amongst the directors patching that up. That was in the middle of an SEC investigation. Um, but around about 2020, um, I was in New York and I was looking at investing in companies that allowed you to borrow against your Bitcoin um, and would share the interest um, from, you know, those that wanted yield. Um, and we thought it was an institutional peer-to-peer -peer lending model. I'd been involved in peer-to-peer -peer lending in the UK. It was a model that started around 2000 and 2005 in the UK. And this was the crypto equivalent. Um, and uh, that was a complete lie. Basically, it was an illegal hedge fund. Um, they deviated from the institutional peer-to-peer uh, -peer lending model, and they started actually acting like a hedge fund by investing in mining operations, venture capital, DeFi. Um, but the difference is that when you're a peer-to-peer -peer lending model, um, you know, it's very, you disclose the risks and you understand and you have your lending licenses and uh, various other things. Once you become a security, you're now a hedge fund. You have to disclose all those risks. You have to let people know what you're doing with the money. Um, and you have to follow a very strict mandate, audit requirements, and all that type of stuff. Uh, Mijinsky started losing money, inevitably, um, and never made a profit, um, but represented to everybody that uh, all of, uh, you know, every, basically 80% of all the revenue was going to customers, and they were keeping 20%. Um, but then they used the fact that uh, there was a token, sell token, that sat on their balance sheet. And Mijinsky took client money 
um, and then use that in order to manipulate the price of the sell token on FTX with Sam Bankman Freed. Um, and, uh, and, you know, there was massive loans across three hours capital Celsius, um, FTX, um, but the FTX allowed them to manipulate the price of sell token so that they could make the company look bigger than it actually was. So they would take the tokens that were on the balance sheet that they printed for free, mark them to market price, even though you could never sell them for that, um, and then defrauded investors like me into thinking that there was, you know, billions of dollars of assets backing this company. Um, and then he used that as a way to tell everybody that they should empty out their retirement funds, their life savings, convert their dollars. He even created products where you could take your IRA convert it into a Celsius IRA, um, convert that to stable coins, and then he would earn his 17% number was the highest number uh, because obviously that was the number that Terra Luna was paying um, at oh, the high level right. um, in, that, in that Ponzi scheme. So, um, you know, and uh, yeah, and uh, from 2020, it deviated from this peer-to-peer -peer lending model, became a hedge fund, lost loads of money, had a multi-billion dollar hole in the balance sheet, um, but represented to everybody that it was safer than a bank um, and that it was less risk than um, some of the banks were taking as well. And so therein, you know, is the problem. It started really with the sell token. Um, and over the years, um, you know, we, we actually got involved right at the end because they wanted to raise more money, a Series B, to fill the hole. And his plan was that he had a multi-billion dollar hole. He was going to take client Bitcoin, borrow against it, and invest it all in a mining operation, try and create the next riot or marathon, float it on NASDAQ, and then use those money, use that money in order to fill the hole, keep it for shareholders, um, but not actually um, you know, disclose any of that to creditors. And when Terra Luna blew up, um, it exposed everything um, and uh, mass withdrawals happened. And then eventually the very last order to try and purchase sell token, there was no stable coins left. Mm. And so the whole sell token collapsed and revealed this $3 billion losses um, that uh, Mijinsky and Daniel Leone had accumulated for creditors and hidden from them all along. Yeah. And that's, so there, there, there's two things. It's Alex Mijinsky and I believe also Daniel Leone has also been indicted uh, as well. Uh, I don't think Daniel Leone has, which is very surprising to me. Um, another person is Ronnie. I always forget his surname. Ronnie Coven Poen. Oh. Sorry, I'm saying that wrong. Um, I'm yeah. butchering the name. I stand corrected. But Ronnie. Yeah, Ronnie. Yeah. Um, Ronnie um, actually is still employed by Celsius today. And he's oh. actually applied for a bonus in order to get the company sold and out of bankruptcy and wound down. Um, and, uh, you know, he's been taking a salary throughout this whole thing. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, he's, uh, he, he's a, a, an orchestrator and he's one of the people that have been um, involved in this. I do want to say wow. this broke as we were being interviewed. So I haven't actually read the full <laughs> thing. I just know everything that I know about the case from before this. So there may be new news that I haven't actually read yet. Yeah, exactly. This is, this is a very breaking story. So everybody watching the video at home, just know that uh, we're filling in the gaps as... As, as they become available. And also there was this, this piece that was from the article and I want to talk about this and we'll get into, you know, what is the security? But it was, the regulators accused Mashinsky of, of uh, uh, misrepresenting and they said they falsely claimed the firm made 50 million from an ICO when it actually it raised less than 65% of its gold. So they said that, yes, we made 50 million, but they didn't make 50 million. It was uh, much less. And I guess, the, so, so speak on that. And then also let's talk about real quick, the token itself, is it a security? And what about the, what about the EARN program? And who owns those tokens right now? Yeah, so throughout the last year, we've been, um, I've been in court case after court case, uh, trying to get to the bottom of this and unwind this um, for creditors. Um, I should disclose, I'm, you know, I wanted to take a small percentage of my wealth and borrow against my Bitcoin as well. Sure. Um, so I had, I have a claim. Um, it's transparent, so you know I, I can't really um, hide it. But it's like over a thousand Bitcoin in total. Um, that made me one of the top ten creditors and the large, one of the largest individual creditors. Um, and so I've been working um, to try and get a recovery, but built relationships with the six hundred thousand, and there's about ten thousand active in our community. 
um, you know, that, that got ripped off in this process. So for the last year, we've been doing Twitter spaces every week. Um, we've been doing uh, YouTube video updates, creating plans of how to take all these assets. Um, but it was revealed um, when, you know, we, we actually at Bank to the Future um, wanted to actually bid on the company just to give all of the funds to creditors back and all of the equity and the assets to creditors because we're the first regulated securities business. So we had the capability of doing it. Um, and uh, so we were involved in, in that process there. As part of that, um, you know, it was discovered that, yes, there was $18 million that they represented, they raised in the token sale um, that Mijinsky actually was meant to invest but never invested um, and completely hid that from everybody, making it sound like the token was more popular. Now, one of the interesting parts of the case right now is I was an equity investor um, and uh, my equity became worthless as soon as you hit into bankruptcy. Um, but uh, there's a case right now that's being fought because those that purchase sell token are kind of fit into two camps. You've got the insiders that defrauded everybody. So Mijinsky is the largest sell token holder and he used that to represent you know, he gave himself a load of free tokens that he, he said that he paid for and never paid for, put them in Celsius, and then told everybody, you Celsius, I'm the mo I put all my net worth on Celsius. But really, it was his sell token. Um, and then he was selling those sell tokens to customers over the counter and then putting that Bitcoin back. But he withdrew all of his Bitcoin, all of his Ethereum, and left all his sell token in the estate when he knew it was going into bankruptcy. Mm. Um, and that's when he was going on a roadshow telling everybody, everything's safe, don't withdraw, you know, um, everything's fine, there's no problems. He was withdrawing his funds and telling everyone to deposit. And he even went on Twitter and said, if you deposit at Celsius right now, I'll give you $1,000 if you're a new customer um, and various other things. Anyway, um, there's so much to cover here, I kind of go off on these <laughs> tangents. But yeah, yeah, the sale token. So one of the cases right now is... Um, bankruptcy code states that you get the petition that so the, the the day you file bankruptcy which was 13th of july 2022 um the price of all the tokens on that date determines how many dollars the bankruptcy estate owes you now at that point bitcoin was nineteen thousand dollars and also there was a short squeeze organized where people were manipulating it was actually an insider at celsius that started it um, and then they made it think it was a, a bottom-up community movement. And Mijinsky was pushing everyone along and still to this day contacts all the sell token holders uh, to try and join his side. Yeah. Um, but they manipulated the price up to 81 cents. And this has been investigated and they've subpoenaed um, FTX to try and get the data on the market manipulation because that determines, because the basically... They, they believe that sell token is a security because he actually registered it as a security when he sold it with the SEC. Um, and uh, the 81 cents actually determines how much they get, which is hundreds of millions of dollars right. Right into the estate. There's a bunch of insiders. There's people that were given it for free. Now, remember how Mijinsky constructed it. If you get the price up to $150, $3, then all of the employees get free tokens. That's extracting value from the genuine victims. And then some people were buying genuine victims, bought Mijinsky's coins or Celsius's coins at like $5, $8, $6. Mm. Um, but the reality is that um, that's now being determined. The, the, the bankruptcy lawyers worked on Lehman Brothers and various other WorldCom, you know, various other um, bankruptcies. They said in every case, non-equity securities are known as what's subordinated, which means you get zero, just like an equity holder. Um, and so they're going through a settlement at the moment, but whether sell token is a security or not determines whether that can be subordinated. Um, so it becomes pretty interesting, and that really ties into, obviously, the crypto agenda for what is securities and what aren't securities because they get treated differently um, as well. I gotcha. You know... I I, I covered them a long time ago and I could have, and I, there was a documentation where I don't know when it was, it was, it was put out, but it's an old video on my, my other channel, Dan DJ, where it said that 
uh, cell was listed as a security at some point in time. And then it got, and then they, they, they took it out and they said, no, it's not a security. That was, but, and I, I can't find the documentation anymore. So I'll look that up later, but I will just say that Simon, I mean, you got taken for a ride. I got taken for a ride. Unfortunately, the people that I talked about it on the channel, they got taken for a ride, but we all got lied to essentially. And we all have our fun stuck on there. You have a lot more than me. I got a nice little six figures over there. But again, it's, it's, it's the, the psychosis of the person that is telling the lies and they're, and they're coming in front of us and going, no, 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 everything's fine. Every, you know, just keep putting it in. There's a special level of person that, that is able to do that. And there's very few people that can actually lie to your face that effectively. And one of those guys would be like a Bernie Madoff. And I think Alex Mashinsky is kind of in that, that same category. I could be wrong, but that's just how I see it. And then to, to finish this up, there was a, a piece in this very last section here uh, New York Attorney General uh, Letitia James, uh, she, was, she was actually the first and sued uh, Alex Mashinsky uh, in January for fraud. So the question I have is, this is going on, but what is the defense on the side of Celsius, Mashinsky, and co? How are they saying, no, 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 we're actually in the clear here, and how does that all work? Yeah. Um, so this kind of relates to there's two type, there's two defenses. One is against the lies and the other is against whether it's a security or not. And this mm. ties into the earned program. So um, there were many companies offering earned programs. You know, originally when I invested in the company, we were represented that this is a peer to peer institutional loans that people, you know, they'd be sharing the interest and people institutions are willing to pay interest to borrow the coins. Yeah. Um, and then they would be matched up and then they would share, you know, some of the interest with that. But it would be over collateralized, always over collateralized, because right. if their bets went wrong, then you could just do a margin call and clients wouldn't lose their money. It would just cost the yield. Right. Think about it. That's a very big difference. If an institution is putting more collateral than they're borrowing, um, then they're taking the risk. And if the risk goes wrong then client money isn't on the line. Um, but what they did is they ended up doing under collateralized loans, which means that the program, the, the process of offering interest on a, um, you know, on to credit to what's now creditors to customers is a security because they deviated away because now we were taking directional risk. Three hours capital was playing different games, investing in Luna um, you know, it, uh, doing the GBTC arbitrage trade. And then they didn't have enough collateral. Um, and so therefore, the customers were taking directional risk. That's a security. Um, and so the earned program is a security. And if you look across the SEC, they went to Voyager, they went to Gemini, they went to Genesis, uh, mm. they went to Celsius, and they said, you're offering illegal securities. Um, you need to disclose to your customers, ensure they're suitable and they're not betting their life, homes, and retirement on some trader that they don't know what's actually going on. And so that was really the issue, right? So now you've got a earn program that is considered a security. Mijinsky comes along and says two things in his defense. He said, firstly, um, creditors spent 10 million on an examiner report to investigate all this stuff, and it was transparent, a 600-page report on all the fraud that Mijinsky did. Um, by interviewing all the previous employees and various other things. Um, but uh, the, yeah, he says, it turns out I told everybody that we would share a percentage of all the revenue. And in his defense, he said, the examiner's right, it was a lie. And because it was a lie, therefore it's, the EARN program's not a security. Because what? it wasn't dependent upon the efforts of our investments and the yield was all fake and we were just promising to pay people, but it had no connection to what we were investing in or what we were doing because we were paying them anyway. And so therefore he said, yes, you know, it's not a security because we were just paying yield and the yield was fake. Defense one. Wow. Defense two is he's saying, and it's okay that I lied to you because he used, um, What's the name of the person, the Silicon Valley lady that um, defrauded everybody for the blood? Theranos? Uh, the, the, the Theranos founder? 
Yeah, what's her name? Elizabeth um, Holmes. Why, it's lost me. Elizabeth Holmes. Right. So Elizabeth, he used the Elizabeth Holmes defense. And the Elizabeth Holmes defense is kind of, you know, you're going up, you're going down for tw 20 years and you try to get it down to 10. And he used the puffery defense. That's and it. Puffery, puffery, if you look it up, if you look up puffery, it says, my lies were so ridiculous that you were never meant to believe them in the first place. So he slapped everyone in the face that has been defending him and said, you were never meant to believe my lies because it was just puffery. And therefore, um, and because the yield was not connected to these actions, therefore it's not a security. Those are his two defenses. Um, and he was arrested today, uh, despite the fact that the New York Attorney General was doing it in the, in the civil cases. And now it's become a criminal case. Uh, because of his complete and utter misrepresentation, what he calls puffery, um, and his outright fraud that he says, I'll use the fact that um, we lied to say that it's not a security and therefore I didn't commit securities fraud. So now he's done for seven counts of fraud, and I've got to read the paper uh, to go a little bit deeper into figuring out exactly what's come out today. Perfect. So that would, so Simon, thanks for, for coming on. There's so much information coming on so fast. Really what everybody should be doing is, uh, just to make this simple, there's two places you can find Simon. A lagging, a, a lagging information, which will be YouTube, but if you want to be up to date, you got to follow Simon on Twitter. And the link to his YouTube channel and Twitter will be in the link in the description. You can check it out. But if you want to know exactly what's going on up to the minute and have really essentially uh, Simon do all the heavy lifting, which is do, reading all the documents, reading all the paperwork and telling you what's happening, you definitely need to follow Simon. So Simon, anything else before we take off? Uh, no, I mean, it's been such a rabbit hole. One final thing that was interesting was the fact that uh, the coins are actually on the move right now and all of them are being converted into Bitcoin and ETH. The reason behind that is because um, if the underlying asset is a security, then they could be dollarized and you'd have to pay out dollars and sell them, which is what happened in the Voyager case. Yeah. Um, so it, the Binance and Coinbase listed all the things they consider securities like ADA and um, you know Avalanche and various other things. So Celsius got ahead of that. They've converted them all to Bitcoin and ETH so that the underlying asset um, is not considered a security so it can be distributed to creditors. But that was only possible because they basically said when you deposited these coins became property of Celsius, which means that it's an illegal bank and it was engaging in fractional reserve banking and uh, various other things. Yeah. So yeah. it's very, very interesting. There's lots of intricate details. And one of the things, even if you're not a Celsius creditor, um, I kind of wear two hats. I, I wear my, this is my deep project that I'm in at the moment. Yeah. But then I'm also writing my book and, and helping people understand the greater impact that this has on central bank digital currencies, Bitcoin, stable coins, the wider crypto market. So I take off my Celsius hat, look at the grand and macro trends and say, because of these legal incomes, the outcomes where I'm involved in the intricate details, um, here's how it affects the whole market and the bigger geopolitical stuff, which we often discuss um, when I'm doing interviews with you, Rob. Excellent. Well, my man, I got to tell you, it, the timing couldn't have been more perfect. I appreciate you coming back on the show. Again, everybody, you can find Simon's information in the description. Definitely follow him on Twitter and uh, we'll bring you the best information we can. Thanks so much, everybody. If you like today's video, thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff to both of us. And uh, we will see you on the next one. Thank you. Okay.